it has its ups and downs. I mean, it all depends on, on how you look at it, you know what I mean? I think there's a lot of potential here. I think there's a lot of bad publicity. And there is some bad stuff that goes on here that happens in any community. But I think here, it's uh, there's a lot of good, and a lot of good goes unnoticed. My name is Pamela Chivnin, and I originally come from Quincy, Massachusetts. And I moved down here in the New Bedford area because the rents were a lot cheaper. They were about half the price of um, Quincy Mass Apartments. And um, I was paying about $12.50, now I'm paying $600 for the same kind of apartment. Although I am sacrificing um, living in a better neighborhood and living in a better environment. It just amazes me some of the stuff I see around here. And I know there are good people around here too. Well, my name is Roberto Calderon. Mm -hmm. I'm the owner of this restaurant, Cafe Portugal. Okay. Hey, my name is Johnny. Uh -huh. I'm 18. Born and raised out here. My name's John. I lived in New Bedford three and a half years. I'm originally from Boston, Mass. I did grow up in a suburb outside of Boston, but spent the majority of my adult life in uh, Boston. Well, my name's Erica. I'm going to be 18 this month on the 19th, and I've lived here my whole life. Hi, right, my name is Alexander Vitello. I'm from Fall River, Massachusetts, and I work in New Bedford. I've been working in New Bedford for like five years. I actually worked for a cleaning company. I cleaned this uh, bank right here across the street from uh, from Echo Lounge, right? I learned how to play through here at Echo. It's my home. I know everybody here. Everybody treats me different somewhere else, and over here I feel like I can be myself around anybody. I'm Dan Grasa. Uh, I'm in Florestala. He's the same thing, he's, he's Andre Rezins. Mm -hmm. My name, Steve. JYD, Junkyard Dog. Mm -hmm. 15 years in the fucking Junkyard. 15 years, Junkyard Dog. So my name's Felicia Cruz, uh -huh. 17. Been living in New Buffett since I was two. In the South End though, this North End's nasty. I would not recommend you to make this film on the North End. You should have done it on County Street or something. But yeah. <laughs> Why wouldn't you recommend me I'm doing like, a film out here? Because it's just nasty and dirty. Look at the floor, it looks dirty. Look at the people, <laughs> they look dirty. Everything just looks right. dirty. Now, like, it's a good place, honestly. Like, it's probably, like, the most liveest place in New Buffett. Like, you would never walk somewhere and see so many people as you see on the Ave, but they need a clean it and I don't see the city I mean they did a good job here fixing up the road but I really don't see the city going out of their way improving the city um it's like they're they're tearing things down you know like the old mills and stuff but they're they're, they're, they're not putting things back up I mean I can understand beautifying the city but okay beautify the city but also help the people in the city everybody's here for the feast but then after the feast, they forget about it. Mm -hmm. And it's actually a very nice, you know, we have Portuguese bakeries right here. We have Portuguese restaurants. We have Guatemalan restaurants. Uh, we have a fried chicken place right down the street. We have a local fire station. We know all the firemen. They come in. They know most of the people in the area. What I, what I like to see, it's more Portuguese people involved with business and the, the mayor involved with the... Because we still have a small problem that needs to be fixed. The mayor needs to be involved in you know, for for a better city you now, uh, a and safe city you now. Okay. Because there's still a, still a problem with the safety. You know how many times I got hit on this avenue? What do you mean hit? Don't know who I am. That don't know who I am or oh, thought really? I was somebody else until after they hit me. So you had anything too bad happening. I got stabbed in the lake once around here, which wasn't good. Um, and once again, it wasn't properly handled. I had to defend myself, but I still got uh, I still get stabbed in the leg, which ain't very pleasant. It's like, oh my God, I've never had so many occurrences in a 10 month period to deal with emotionally. Yeah, I've changed a lot from when I was younger. The yeah, used to be an all right spot to hang out with, just enjoy yourself with your friends and have a good time. Now it ain't like that. It's a bunch of drama and all repetition all the time. Don't start drama with the neighborhood people. Don't do it. Because okay. then it's going to pop off. <laughs> and that's it. Right, I was about to get the other one. I said, I'll give you a trade and some cash, but I just happened to see that. He's the phone I want. It's $25 cheaper than what he's selling this one for. And he says, uh, I'll give you, I don't know, 20 bucks. This one's 200 
I don't know if you give me, I don't know, 120 bucks in your phone, I'll get you the other one. Fuck that, y'all hustlers, you can suck my dick. You might not see it at now, but at night, oh man, it's like, it's like Beirut out here at night. They, they change from, from day to night. You spilled the hang on the album on the wall right there with all our cars just hang out, everybody coming by, taking a look at the cars, you know. You know, stripping it up and down little races here and there. That used to be a cool spot to hang out. Now it's like, it ain't worth it. So much shit on here. It's, it's unbelievable. It's all drama, kid. Yeah, and another thing, the drugs are ridiculous around here. You could walk down the street and some dude will just come up to you and say, ask you if you want to buy an eight ball or do you know where I could get dope or anything like that. I, I could be an undercover cop or you know. I mean, there's always been drugs around, but it was more of a older people were doing it. Now you got you got kids out here 10, 11, 12 years old selling drugs. It might all look good, but I've never met a drug dealer in my life that can say that he retired. The drugs are bad around here. They need to, you know, start doing something, sending out law enforcement to bust people, something. But I don't know, it's just bad around here. It's I don't true. like it, I hate it here. There's, there's ratchet people out here, the old cutties, there's prostitutes. And that's mostly it. That's all you're gonna find out here. So when you say cutties, what do you what are you like referring to? Like crackheads, dope fiends, all that. Crackheads, prostitutes. Ridiculous when you see 14 year olds walking the streets at 3 a.m. in the morning. That's ridiculous. What are these parents doing? That tells you what is the what, what are these parents doing around here? I know a lot of these kids are young, troubled, and they grew up in tough lives, and you know they're gonna act that way. I did some stupid things when I was younger too. But I mean, it's just, it, it just, it, it's sickening that you get to walk around in the middle of the night and watch your back. I'm not even talking about the middle of the night. You can walk around 8 o'clock around here and worry about being jumped or stabbed. I said, I lived in Bethlehem my whole life. And going back in the 80s, man, all these factories around here, they were just, you know, there was work there, you know. But now, then uh, they're all closing up. They're all moving out. Uh, we both know that the job rate right now is like in the toilet, you know. That's why I, I can, get, can say to you, whatever you do, stay in school. Finish school, man. I'm 53 years old. I can remember when you graduated from high school, you could get by. But now you can't even get by on a high school diploma. You gotta have, you gotta go to college. To me, the city, it's, it's getting beautified, but it's not getting any better. We need more programs out here for younger kids. You know, like more YMCA, more recreational centers more jobs, but it's not like Boston, you know? I mean, you can live down here as far as rent. Rent is a little bit cheaper down here. Within this part of the North End, you know, the rent might be cheaper, you know what I mean? Maybe $700, $750. Um, when you're going further north, you know, then things are starting to get a little expensive. Then you got another problem though. Then you fix, you fix the real estate, the rents are gonna go down doesn't get the publicity that maybe the downtown area does. We don't have a, a college campus here. But I think, you know, right across the street here is an empty building that has a bank and a barber shop. Well, it would be great if uh, somebody like uh, UMass Dartmouth was to look at it and have some kind of a satellite program here, um, whether it be for immigrants or just for their own students, you know, and it would give them a different blend of culture. The kids are our future, and if we don't, set them in the right direction, it's just going to be history repeating itself, you know? And New Bedford is, believe it or not, New Bedford is a beautiful town. It's a nice town. Because it's not so bad. It really is the people that make the neighborhood. Nobody around here is like, some anybody I would chill with. I don't chill around here with any of these people. So there's kind of nothing to, to do. Oh, man, it's definitely, it's negative parts. Tend to use drugs around here, but then again, there's also the good parts. Where, you know, like I said, there's a lot of family things going on. You know, there's a lot of restaurants, places you can take your kids to go shopping. We can see it's bad and locking on. We had a family in a three-decker that burnt. It was basically a total last year. Two girls. Uh, mother and daughter lived in the house. The mother was in the hospital at the time, I believe with cancer or some illness. And uh, the daughter was home alone. I don't know how the fire started. It was a block away from the fire station. 
the time the fire department got there, it was fully engulfed. And the people in the house lost everything. So we said, well, we're going to try to do something. Well, then we had a uh, spaghetti dinner. We were able to raise $1,000. That's most of the majority, usually like either Portuguese and Spanish that I see out here. The culture is definitely all Portuguese. It's fucking Portuguese. <laughs> you know, I'm walking around, I'm in, I'm in Portugal. That's, that's why I come here, you know. Okay. I go here, have an espresso, watch a game, and that's it. Okay. I feel okay. like I'm back at home. It's Portuguese, a lot of Portuguese people, even though there's different people that come besides Portuguese people. My biggest customers is uh, they're Portuguese. I would say it's heading toward diversity. I would say definitely it's got a history of um, Portuguese. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of Latinos around here, mm -hmm. um, some Cape Verdeans, African Americans, and mm -hmm. some Caucasians like myself. Mm -hmm. So I would say it's got a potential to be diversified, but I do see a lot of um, racism and stuff going on like that around. <laughs> Back in the day, it used to just be just white people all on the avenue. Nowadays, it's just a mixture of everything on the avenue. My name's Alyssa Pauline. I'm 21, and I've been over here for three to four years hanging out. Raymond, and 18, and I've been around for 18 years. Um, my name is Carlos Garcia, I'm 21. I've uh, been here for like maybe, I want to say 12 years. Well, there's Portuguese, Puerto Rican, and Guatemalans, and Mexicans. There's a lot of different cultures. Variety, okay. diversity, and nationalities. Spanish, we have uh, Dominicans, we have Guatemalans, Portuguese, straight, we have Swamp Yankees, you name it, <laughs> everyone comes in here, you know. This is America, and Coming to America, you know, you could do a lot more than uh, going to Guatemala and uh, different other countries. More freedom. Um, you can have your own business. Uh, pretty much, you do what you want. It was uh, less interracial 15 years ago. The okay. South End as well as the North, okay. mostly Caucasian. This area was specifically Portuguese dominated. Right. It's no longer like that. I am who I am. I am a Gauthier, French, proud, and American. Everybody here is immigrants, and mm -hmm. but the new immigrants, a lot of the Portuguese people are only looking at second and third generation. With some of the uh, Central American people, it's their first generation. But they feel comfortable enough now to come here, and they're getting involved in, uh, they're uh, blending into the community, and becoming part of the com community, not just their own separate community. So walking right to this, where are we at? Casa de Portugal. We're watching a big soccer game right now against Barcelona. I buy this place almost 30 years ago. Wow. Man, now this is something very, you don't want to believe me. Okay, tell me. I'm not Portuguese. Okay. This is a Portuguese restaurant. Uh-huh. And I'm from Mexico. I can pull. <laughs> so, uh, this is my second Portuguese restaurant. My wife's Portuguese. Okay. And when I buy this place, I can change the name, I can do something different, but I keep it the same as before. I like to keep it nice Portuguese restaurant. Awesome. And my employers, everybody's a Portuguese. Pues me imagino que esta avenida se va a hacer cada día más más de de ambiente hispano, porque me he dado cuenta que se están abriendo negocios ya sean tiendas de ropa, restaurantes, tiendas de abarrotes, mercadería, y la mayoría son, los dueños son hispanos, guatemaltecos, mexicanos, dominicanos, y poco a poco esta avenida se está asentando más la, la cultura hispana. I see a lot of Spanish business, a lot of Spanish people already, my customers, customers, so. Spanish, you know, from Guatemala, Honduras, Mexico, you know, yeah. We, now we can see a lot of Spanish people also. So this together with the Portuguese, you know, looks very, very nice, you know. Overall, this place has some potential. It's got history to it. So 
if they ever want to, you know, start generating tourism, get the tourism up down here, or the real estate go up, they need to fix it up. Boston was really bad at one time. They fixed a lot of Boston up. Boston's booming now as far mm -hmm. as like tourism and stuff like that. And in five, ten years, I want to retire because I know I want to do it very good. Because I know the city is going to fix the Acoustic Avenue. Mm -hmm. They want to do it very good. So we want to have a more business from the downtown. I'd rather uh, support small uh, local businesses. I love New Bedford, I love Fall River, you know, great restaurants, especially the ones on the Ave, you know, you got some good bars in New Bedford. <laughs> but hey, I loved it, like, 